Yeah. All right. Um, thank you all for coming, and, and thanks to the Manitoba Institute for Policy Research for having us here. It's a pleasure to be able to speak to you about um, some of the challenges and solutions that we're facing. And I hope to be able to give you a bit of a perspective on what the potential role of the NGO community is in addressing um, this issue, which is a big, complex issue. And um, there, are, there are many interrelated factors affecting this. There are many challenges we need to address. And the Lake Winnipeg Foundation has found that um, it's been helpful to us to ask ourselves this question. What's the best way to solve big, complex problems that demand a multitude of diverse solutions and ultimately will require some measure of sacrifice from a great number of stakeholders? That's a big question, and that's about how we start looking for solutions. What's the best approach? How can we have the most impact? Complicating that question is the fact that Sacrifice is going to be required from these stakeholders, but nobody wants to be the first. Nobody wants to be the first to say, we're going to take a step, we're going to make a measurable change that's going to reduce phosphorus flowing to the lake. The other challenge is that no single organization, even if they did come forward as the first, could achieve this alone. Um, this is a problem where we're going to need the interaction and the collaboration of multiple agencies, organizations, groups, individuals, industry, to ensure that the changes that we, that we affect on the landscape are lasting and that they're going to, to show us a real impact in terms of ecological conditions. So how do we address these problems? There are three um, general broad strategies for problem solving. You can address a problem using authoritative tools. So in that case, you vest the power and the responsibility to solve the problem with a small number of people and say, you solve this problem for us and uh, uh, we'll, we'll let you be responsible for that. You can also take a competitive approach and what that does is essentially pit different solutions against each other with the hope that the competition will allow the best solution to emerge from that. A third strategy is a collaborative approach. Essentially, this type of strategy aims to engage all the stakeholders, to bring them all together to a common table and say, how can we come up with solutions that are going to work for all of us, that are going to result in, yes, a sacrifice, but benefits to all of us as well. And there are obviously limitations and benefits to all of these approaches to problem solving. What the Lake Winnipeg Foundation has come to realize and to reaffirm is that uh, we feel that there's the most potential impact in a collaborative approach. And the interesting thing is when you begin to commit to a collaborative approach and you bring people together to a common table, all of a sudden those other tools for problem solving become more palatable. And it becomes more possible to consider an authoritative tool or a competitive tool in addressing this problem. So when we identify a common priority that is in our collective interest, we can then enact authoritative strategies in the form of policy or regulation to protect that common priority. Or if we identify an opportunity, as Hank is helping us reframe the, the problem as a, potentially some opportunities, if we identify an opportunity, we can then use competitive strategies like the market to allow us to really take advantage of that opportunity with the best possible solution. So the Lake Winnipeg Foundation is moving forward within this framework of collaboration, not throwing any other tools for problem solving to the side, but starting from a perspective of collaboration. And from that, we've begun the development of the Lake Winnipeg Health Plan. This is essentially a broad scale program that we are um, using to advance nutrient reduction strategies that we think will have a measurable impact on the landscape. It's being developed using a collaborative process. So our first step was to identify a suite of phosphorus reduction initiatives that if taken together could have a significant impact on the health of the lake. And we brought those initiatives to our Science Advisory Council. LWF's work is guided by the advice of these scientific experts. They represent um, a large amount of the freshwater expertise in Canada, and they help us make science-based decisions in our programs. They also ensure that we're solutions-focused, that the things that we're doing really will have an impact. And so working with them, we've begun an iterative process where we develop the strategies of the Lake Winnipeg Health Plan, and there are eight actions of those bring them to our scientific advisory council for refinement, for evaluation, 
for advice and to ensure that we have the latest research supporting those. And then we're bringing them out to other stakeholders that are interested in this. And we're looking for plan champions. So those are industry organizations, conservation organizations, groups of, of concerned citizens who are helping us by identifying areas of our action plan that resonate with them, that they have expertise to help us address, and then we're moving forward to champion those together. Another key aspect of the plan is that it's based on looking upstream. So while most of us will experience the challenges that Lake Winnipeg faces when we go to the lake, when we're standing on the beach and we see the algae blooms, the real root cause, as these gentlemen have alluded, comes from the watershed. So it's by looking upstream to the watershed that we'll actually address the root cause of the harmful algae blooms. So the eight actions of the Lake Winnipeg Health Plan. The first is keeping water on the lake. And this is about recognizing that we need to start to reduce the amount of phosphorus that's flowing into the lake through spring runoff and major storm events. The more water that runs off the land, the more phosphorus enters the lake. But we can start to use the natural water holding capacity of the landscape, and we can start to mimic that in order to ensure that we're holding more phosphorus on the land. Conserving the boreal forest is about recognizing that Lake Winnipeg is a boreal lake. It's surrounded by intact boreal forest on many sides. And that forest provides some of the purest or cleanest water that, that enters the lake. So if we protect that boreal forest, we're protecting the source waters of Lake Winnipeg. Setting the standard for wastewater treatment essentially recognizes that all the water we use on the landscape, all the water that goes down our drains, that we flush down the toilet, ultimately ends up in Lake Winnipeg. And it's our responsibility to ensure it's as clean as possible when it gets there. Monitoring our waterways is about ensuring that we have the best science, the best data, the right data, and we're sharing it so that we can all contribute to the development of, of good solutions and smart solutions for Lake Winnipeg. Managing our shorelines recognizes that the shoreline of the lake is the last line of, the, of defense. It's essentially a barrier for contaminants that, that could potentially enter the lake. But it's also a really special place where we all like to spend time and experience the lake. And so by coming together and, and putting in place a set of shoreline management guidelines, we can ensure that we're achieving the right balance of protection and development of the lake shorelines. <clears throat> Promoting agricultural water stewardship. This is about recognizing that it's actually potentially uh, possible to frame the role of agriculture and the health of our lakes is a win-win situation. This is about telling ourselves a different story. <coughs> Nutrients are incredibly valuable, as Hank said, when they're on our land. They increase the productive capacity of our land, um, they allow us to grow more food to consume and to export. So if we find practices that keep those nutrients on our land and out of our waters, essentially we're creating healthy land and water. Investing in a clean water economy is about some of those tools that Hank was speaking about, which is recognizing that though we have international attention here, and, uh, and though we have a large example of the effects of harmful algae blooms, it's actually a problem that's global. It's affecting jurisdictions around the world. And we can start to develop and implement and export made in Manitoba solutions. The final action is taking responsibility, and that's about ensuring that each and every one of us is engaging with the solution the way that, that we all are here tonight. All of this is... Is right at the end. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you, have, you, you, you should complete your thought, though. Okay, I'm going to complete this thought right here. Um, the other role that I see for NGOs in this, in this large, complex problem is one of ensuring mutual accountability. So we all get really excited at the, at the outset of a new initiative. We all like to come together. There's a lot of momentum. There's a lot of opportunity for success. I think NGOs can play a role in ensuring that we keep that long-term vision always in our sights and that we're measuring our progress towards it. So we don't fall too far off course. And we always remember what brought us together in the beginning. It was well wrapped up. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Alexis, Hang, and Norm. Uh, join me in thanking each of them this evening. Thank you, Dan Lett, for moderating. And thank you all very much for coming out to this uh, policy pizza and pint.
Uh, when we started this process about 18 months ago, I said to Dan, we might go through a few of them. The odd person might come out, they might find it interesting. Um, we've had tremendous success. Uh, I really encourage you to fill your feedback forms because we've already had 40 suggestions from people like you on future topics. Uh, and uh, we value that feedback because it helps us know what's important to the people here in Winnipeg and the province of Manitoba. So thank you again so much for coming out this evening. If there are any University of Manitoba students here, graduate students or late year students who are interested in a very interesting course being taught on Lake Winnipeg this summer, feel free to uh, say hi to me after this and I can give you some information. And to everybody else, thank you so much for coming out this evening. And uh, I hope uh, to see you at the next Pulse Piece of Pint or Cafe Pulse. Thank you.